Hey, how's it going? Got a quick one for you today. We're gonna be adjusting the shock absorbers on a Permobile F3 power chair, which we have sitting right here. Now this process is gonna be pretty much exactly the same for the F3, the M3, and overall for the 5 Series chairs as well, like the M5 and F5. I printed off the pages from the two service manuals. Turns out it's actually ridiculously easy. I thought a long time ago that you had to remove the shock absorbers and take them off the chair and do all this crazy stuff. No. Turns out it is very simple. Essentially all you got to do is get out of the chair and Permobil shows this little tool right here which is used to adjust the shocks. But I found instead of this tool, all you need is a set of Allen wrenches. It doesn't have to be these right angle T-handle ones, just a, uh, a normal set will work as well. But essentially all you do is get out of the chair and there's little holes all the way around these collars. You just stick your Allen wrench in there and turn them. Now this is off of the M3. These shocks show like an ABC sort of setting thing. On the F3, they don't have that built-in sticker or the marker, at least not all of them do. But essentially all I do is adjust these things till I get just about the amount of tension that I want. Now on this one, I've adjusted them super soft, probably beyond what they should be, but I wanted this thing to feel a little bit more like a trophy truck. So when you lean to one side and back and forth, the suspension actually flexes a little bit. Now this is the same chair that I wanted to remove the left motor from because it's making some weird noises. But unfortunately my foot is still very much broken. So getting up and off of the floor multiple times and taking this thing apart, which is I think gonna be fairly involved, I, I gotta wait till my foot heals for that. Luckily for this, I don't have to get out of this chair. I'm using the steampunk chair at the moment, by the way. This is our uh, C300 here that we put the Honda Mini Trail tires on. And I might have also swapped on F3 Series motors. Anyways, I'm going to grab a folding chair real quick and I'm going to sit down next to this thing and show you how to make these adjustments. Super quick, super simple. This is not a one-handed thing. Ah, there we go. Now this is a lifetime branded folding chair. I'm going to put a link to these down below to Lifetime's website so you can find them. But what I like about these is they're nice and curved. They're super sturdy. They don't tip over. They have a nice dish to the seat and the back is nice and round. Now I do still have a little bit of core strength. It's not as good as it was in years past, but these things work great for me because I can transfer into this thing and it holds me in place. And I know it's not gonna move, it's not gonna tip over. They're maybe 60 bucks each or something crazy like that, but totally worth it, IMO. All we're gonna need for this is a set of Allen wrenches. I've found that the standard 530 seconds is actually the closest fit. I like these because it has the right angle and you can sort of use this thing as a wrench. But you can also use one of these folding sets as well. Let's see. 530 seconds, there we go. So either one of these will work. Um, I would imagine even a set of loose ones, just the little right angle ones. I don't know where those are at the moment, but just to give you an idea, uh, pretty much anything will work that's about that size. Now on the F3 chairs, they have four shock absorbers, two on each side. And the adjustment collar on the front one is facing forward. The adjustment collar on the rear one is facing backwards. And if you notice, there's these little holes in various places around these collars. Now, I was assuming there was some sort of set screws or something in there, but no, those are just indentations to get the shock adjuster tool in there. But check this out. That's all there is to it. Now, I've tried a few different size wrenches, like this is a 3 16 doesn't quite fit in there. This is a five millimeter metric, too big. The four millimeter metric, it goes in there, but as you can see, it's a little bit sloppy. So just for tools that people may have laying around, 530 seconds is the way to go. And this really shouldn't take any force at all. The reason I like these is because you can get in there at a right angle and twist them, especially on the front ones here, because there isn't quite as much room. We've got our power leg actuator and the fender and stuff here, but all you have to do, stick this thing in there, and you can turn it a little bit at a time. Now, if your chair has a seat elevator, it's probably gonna help you a bit to 
lift the thing up. If you don't have a seat elevator, all you need is power tilt. And then that gets you enough clearance to be able to get in here with your folding Allen keys or your right angle ones or whatever you happen to be using. Now, one thing you'll definitely want to do if your chair is dusty or dirty at all, and I'm not even talking about like a huge amount, just from running around a little bit, you can see we get this layer of dust on everything. It would be preferable to get some canned air or maybe an air compressor set to a low setting and blow out all these threads. Because as we turn these, these are a very fine, uh, a fine pitch thread there. And any dirt and stuff in there is gonna make it a lot more tricky to turn these. So getting these cleaned out is gonna make everything a lot easier. I mean, you could even go as far as using some silicone lube and putting it on there. I wouldn't necessarily recommend that because it drips down and gets everywhere. But if you use just the tiniest amount of it in like an aerosol can or something, uh, it's definitely not gonna hurt anything. But yeah, that's all there is to it. I've already adjusted these, but you just basically stick your wrench in there, turn it until you reach your desired setting, and then you're good. Now, I'm gonna put this back before I forget. I believe on this one, I loosened it up maybe four or five threads, something insane. The, the nut on this one was originally all the way up here when I started. If you look at the service manual, which actually, let me move this thing out of the way. And yes, I did wind up getting on the floor. It's, uh, I'm only gonna do one transfer, so it shouldn't be too, a bit, too big of a deal. But I can transfer into this and then back into that and we should be good. But I've got the service manuals uh, on the website, brokenwheelchairs.com. I'm gonna link to these down below. The, uh, let's see, this is the M3, this is the F3. I don't know how old these manuals are. These may be different revision dates. Some of them are going to have this little sticker on here with the ABC, and other ones are just gonna be blank like this. But they do have a general guide here as to how far they should be set. The lighter the person is, the less tension you want on there. So they show measuring between the adjustment nut and the back of the shock absorber mount here, which is this right here. Kind of hard to see. Yeah, there we go. This little lip right here is what they measure from up to the collar. Same thing on the front here, lip to the collar. Now your mileage may, may vary. I would just recommend adjusting these till they feel about right. I'm gonna hop back in this thing and show you how far I've got them adjusted. One thing I did notice though, after adjusting these down this far, like I've got this thing set up right now for probably the lightest weight. Oh, there's ants, excellent. Um, I've got this thing set up right now for the lightest weight possible. I weigh, I think about 230 pounds, but I wanted this as soft as possible. I have noticed, however, these shocks have started making a little bit of noise. I think it's because they're traveling way more than they normally would have. Now, when I got this chair, there's these little rubber, they're not exactly seals, but there's these little caps right here that go over these shock absorbers and these were not attached. So I had to push those back with a screwdriver and get them latched into place. So I don't know if dirt or something got in there, but I don't know if it's recommended. I'm just telling you what I'm doing. Take it with a grain of salt. But I occasionally use a little bit of silicone lube on these shock absorber shafts. I don't really recommend putting chemicals on those because that can affect the seals and everything. But uh, yeah, that's, that's just what I wound up doing. Okay. I'm gonna hop back into this thing, show you the noises that it's making just so you can be aware of that, and then also show you how the chair flexes and how loosely I adjusted these shocks. Okay, I'm back in the chair now. It's not making the noise as much as it has been, but as I move around, it's sort of making just sort of a really dull, crunching, like sort of clicking noise. Yeah, you may not be able to hear it, but let me show you how I've got these set. If you look at our motion points here, we've got the rear arm and the front. If I just lean left and right, see how the whole thing moves? I adjusted them soft enough so that as I lean to one side, they're gonna compress. Now, I'm not sure if these shocks are designed to move that much, but there we go, now you can see. 
But in my case, I wanted the absolute softest ride possible. This chair doesn't really fit me properly, but I figured for now, I'm at least gonna get it as set up as close as possible. So even if I do wind up taking out the shock absorbers by overusing them, that's fine. I just need something that works for now. By the way, the difference between the three series and the five series permobile chairs, at least with the shock absorbers, this is uh, information from a rep, by the way. Uh, so I'm assuming it's accurate. But the shock absorbers on this chair, three series, are air filled. So as you adjust them, they're sealed and air is what takes care of the shock absorption and the rebounding. On the five series chairs, like F5 and M5, for example, they're oil dampened. So they're filled with oil and they've got some valves and a little bit more complex stuff going, around, going on in there. That's why on the five series chairs, the suspension is better. I don't think we're gonna be able to hear that noise. Actually, maybe a little bit, here. There it is. It's that sort of a creaking noise. Yeah, so it's sort of a, uh, a dull creaking sound that they make. Now, again, the little rubber seals on these things were not attached for a long time. I run around in the woods and stuff with this thing and adjusted the shock absorbers way down. But I just say all that to let you know, you may encounter that noise. And actually, let me grab the stuff that I use for that. Okay, well, I actually can't find it right now, so I'll just tilt the camera like this and I'll put a picture of it right here. This is the brand and what the stuff looks like that I use. There's a bunch of different silicone lube available, but uh, that's just what I've used, so yeah, there you go. Okay, uh, let's go outside at this point, and I'm gonna show you the suspension after I've adjusted it so you can kind of see how it works a little bit. Uh, I just smashed my foot again. I was trying to move the steampunk chair out of the way, and I went to turn it, and the tire hit my toe. Uh, I, I can't feel the pain really, but it's, all these muscles are tightened up now. Man, I need to be more careful. I don't think the terminology taking it easy is something that's in my vocabulary as much as I try. I don't know if that really showed anything or not, but anyways, there you go. Let's recap. To adjust the shocks, first step, get out of the chair. Second step, get some Allen keys. Was it five, uh, hang on, let me look at the size. Ah, it was a 530 seconds. So get yourself a 530 seconds Allen key. It can be a T-handle one, folding one, or just the little, um, <laughs> or just the little short bent ones. Look at the chart if you want to kind of get an idea. Uh, service manuals are linked down below or just make some adjustments and uh, keep trying it. Just make sure you do not adjust them when you're sitting in the chair. Those threads, when they have load on them, are fine pitched enough that turning them while they're under load will strip them out. It may not do it right away, but they're gonna get jammed up and not gonna have a good time. If possible, you can put the tiniest amount of silicone lube on those threads. Again, that might make a mess, be careful. Also, cleaning them is fairly important, but all that being said, it's a pretty simple, quick, easy thing to do. So hopefully that helped. If you have any questions, uh, put them down below, but uh, I think this one's pretty self-explanatory. Now you're able to adjust the shocks on your chair, and uh, yeah, you don't have to go to the DME or have a service call or anything like that. For whatever reason, I was just assuming that you had to remove the shocks from the chair to make adjustments. Other chairs are like that. But uh, yeah, not in this case. No set screws or anything funky like that. Just turn the little dial with no load and you're good to go. I am planning on taking the motor off this chair at some point. I don't think that's gonna be for probably another week or so. I know in the last live stream I mentioned that would be the next video, but my stupid foot. Again, I still don't 100% know how I broke my foot. I think it, I, well, I know when I was replacing the tires on the bounder, right there, I did a lot of floor to chair transfers and I'm, Pretty sure that's when it happened. <laughs> but anyways, there'll be another random vlog next, I'm sure. But uh, yeah, eh, is what it is, I guess. Actually, I hate it when people say that. Whatever, I'll catch you next time. <laughs>